Hey everyone, Michael here. Today we're going to be talking about blackbeard algae. Blackbeard algae is one of the most common ones that I see when I go to clients' homes. It's especially common for new planted tank owners. In this video, I'll cover how to identify blackbeard algae, how to figure out the source of your blackbeard algae, how to get rid of it, and how to keep it from coming back. Blackbeard algae is normally pretty easy to identify. It's fuzzy, gray to black, sometimes a little bit on the rusty red side, and there's really no other algae that looks like it. If you let Blackbeard do its thing, it'll end up looking like this. It's completely possible for Blackbeard to smother and kill plants, and unfortunately, it's really tough to scrub off, plus algae eaters won't touch it. Good news is, even though we don't like the way it looks, it's not dangerous for our fish, and fortunately, it's easy to diagnose and treat Blackbeard algae in planted aquariums without having to restart or throw away all your plants. If you're trying to figure out the source of your blackbeard algae, there are two basic scenarios to consider. First is the tank with CO2 and the other without CO2. In either case, if you have high organic waste and water parameters like ammonia or nitrates, that's going to be a big contributor. When I say organic waste, I'm talking about that mucky gunk layer that gets trapped in substrate. The muck layer is basically a collection of fish turds, plant debris, uneaten food, and any other scraps from around the tank. The other big source, which goes for any algae, is unhealthy plant growth. Healthy plants not only outcompete algae for nutrients and light, but they repel algae from growing on them. Unhealthy plants with fading leaves are always the first to show signs of algae. For the no CO2 aquarium, besides water quality, High lighting is the most likely cause. If you blast really intense light without CO2, the plants won't be able to utilize as much of the nutrients as with CO2. The remaining nutrients in combination with high lighting will result in optimal conditions for an algae farm. For the aquariums with CO2, low and fluctuating CO2 levels are the biggest contributors towards blackbeard algae. If you're using inline CO2 injection, hardscape and slow growing plants in areas that get blasted with CO2 are also prone to blackbeard. The very first thing you should do with any algae outbreak is to test your water. If you have any ammonia or high nitrates, that's going to be a big contributor towards blackbeard. Ammonia shouldn't be present in any established aquarium and is usually a sign of overstocking or overfeeding. So consider that if you fall in this category. Doing 50% weekly water changes will help if you're struggling to get your nitrates down. Large water changes help fight algae in two different ways. First is because algae benefits from high levels of nutrients, and getting rid of those nutrients will starve algae of their food. The other angle is that plants benefit from large water changes, and since healthy plants are able to prevent algae growth, large water changes are a win-win. While doing that water change, make sure to get in there and cut off really infested leaves. For slow growing plants, it can be really gut wrenching to have to throw out larger chunks, like this Buchefalandra that I've been growing for a couple years. For plants like this, I like to spot target with Seachem Excel. Seachem Excel is an algicide that's marketed as a bioavailable carbon source. On 50% water change days, I'll treat after the water change, but before I turn the pump on. Simply use the recommended dose and apply it to the infested area with a syringe. Wait 15 minutes before turning the filter back on. The blackbeard algae will start to die off in a few days. Sometimes it will turn white or red when it dies. Other times it doesn't really look much different. Once it dies off, it will stop spreading and become edible for our algae eaters. After spot treating infested areas, it should only take a week or two at most for the algae crew to munch it up. For the no CO2 aquarium that's been well maintained, meaning 50% weekly water changes, low levels of nutrients and organic waste, it's likely that light is the main contributor. So crank that light down. For tanks with CO2, try to optimize your levels so that it's consistently at 30 parts per million while your lights are on. Also make sure the CO2 is getting distributed evenly throughout your tank. Avoid blasting a hardscape with CO2 and instead try to spread it out over heavily planted areas. If your flow rate is excessive, consider lowering that as well. That's all I got for Blackbeard Algae. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks so much for watching and hit that like and subscribe button if you've enjoyed today's content. See you in the next one.